today's video is on binary arithmetic. If you haven't already seen my video on how to convert from binary to decimal numbers and decimal back to binary, please check that out here. While we're going to be doing all of our mathematics in raw binary numbers, it is helpful to understand how to convert between the two bases. So today we're going to look at basic math, going back to grade school, but we're going to throw in a twist. We're going to work in a completely new base. So instead of decimal, which we've all done for our entire lives, we're now going to consider basic mathematics in binary. So we're going to look first at addition, subtraction, multiplication, and finally division. Let's start by looking at some basic addition tables. On the left hand side here we have an addition table in base 10. Across the top we have the numbers 0 through 7 represented and down the side 0 through 4. The gold highlighted or yellow highlighted area is showing how this table would deal with adding 4 plus 4. So you can see here that if we add 4 to 4 we get the result 8. On the right hand side we have a similar table but this time in base 2. In binary we have the numbers 0 through 5 across the top and 0 through 4 coming down the side. We're doing the same thing here, adding 4 and 4, this time getting a result of 8 but expressed in binary. Remember the weights above these places are 1, 2, 4, and 8. So we're denoting that we have a 1 in the 8's place or the value 8. The arithmetic is going to be very much the same. These numbers are not decimal, these are binary numbers. So at the top here we have 110010. Now this happens to be the equivalent of the decimal number 50. Now I said that we're not going to convert normally here, we're just going to do addition, but I want to express the difference here. The reason why I know that is because I'm familiar with the weights that go above each binary place. I know that this first digit here on the right has the weight 1, the second has the weight 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So I have 132 and 116, which makes 48, and a 2, which makes 50. Below it, I have the number 10010. And I know that this is an 18 because I have 116 and 12. Now I could, of course, convert these because I know how to add them up and get the number 68 and then convert it back to binary. But that's not how I want to fix this. I want to actually solve this as a binary equation. So let's get started by looking at the first two digits. In the first place, we have a 0 and a 0. This is pretty straightforward. 0 and 0 in any base still equals 0. The next place, we have a 1 and a 1. Now a 1 and a 1 is 2, but how we express that in binary is 1, 0. So we have to carry the 1 over into the next place because we've exceeded the amount of digits that are allotted in, in the place that we're in. Remember that when we're looking at our weights in binary, we have a 1 in the first place, a 2 in the second place, and a 4 in the third. In decimal, this is equivalent to adding two fives in the same place. If you add 5 and 5, you get 10. You keep the 0 below the current place and you carry the 1 into the next. In decimal, the weights are 1, 10, and 100. And this is an exact mirror. All that's changed here is how many values we have in any single place before we go over to the next place. Let's now consider the third place. We have a 1 and two zeros, so that's pretty straightforward. We're going to bring down a 1. The fourth place is also pretty straightforward. We have 0 plus 0, which is 0. In the fifth place, we have 1 and 1, so again, we're going to have 2, which is a 0 carry 1. And finally, we now have the 1 that we carried and 1 for another 2, so we're going to have a 0 and a carry and a 1. So our final answer is 1000100. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Now, of course, this is the number 68, and we know that because we did the conversions earlier and we also know how to do our weights in binary. Whenever you're working in arithmetic in another base, it's always a good idea to check your work by doing the conversions to decimal to double check yourself. However, if you're taking my class and I ask you to show your work, you have to do it in the base that you're doing the mathematics in. Let's look at a slightly more difficult example. 111110 plus 100100 plus 11111. So we're adding three binary numbers here. 
Let's jump ahead to where things get interesting. The first place was 0, 0, and 1, so that's just a 1. The second place was 1 and 0 and 1, so that's a 2, so that's 0 carry 1. But now in the third place, things are pretty interesting. We have 1, 1, 1, and 1. Now this, of course, is a 4. We can see here that we have a 4 in decimal or a 100 in base 2 shown here with the weights above it. That means that when we carry, we have to carry in the same manner. So we're going to keep our first 0 here, carry the second, and carry the 1. From where we were, this is 0, 0, 1 or 4 more from the place that we were. Now if we add the fourth place, we have 1 and 1, which is an additional 0, 1. So we keep the 0 at the bottom and carry another 1 into the next place in addition to the 1 that was carried from the previous place. Now we have in the fifth place 1, 1, 1, and 1. Again, another 4. Again, we keep the 0 in the place that we are, carry over to the next place a 0, and then two more places over the 1. Now we can add up for the 6th place, 1 and 1, and we have a 0 with yet another carry. We can add up the 7th place, 1 and 1, to get 0 carry 1, and bring that 1 down for our final answer of 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now that we know how to add, let's look at subtraction. There's really no difference here. Everything is exactly the same. We just have to learn the little nuances of how borrowing looks in a different base. Let's take the first step here by trying to subtract the first place. Obviously, we're trying to subtract 1 from 0, which won't work. We know from basic mathematics and decimal that we have to borrow. When you borrow in decimal, remember that you're borrowing 10. When you borrow in binary, you're borrowing from the next place. In this case, it would be 2. What we're going to do is cross off the 1 in our second place, borrow from it, and then bring it over as a 2 in the 1's place. So we have 1, 0 in the 1's place, minus 1, which is 1. Now in the second place, of course, we've left ourselves with a 0, and we have to subtract a 1. We need to borrow again, but there isn't anything in the 4's place to borrow from. We have to go all the way over to the 8's place to borrow. This looks like this. We're actually going to take the 8 and distribute it over the places before. Let's expand this a little bit. Here we can see that we're going to take 1 from the 8's place, but remember we're distributing it over the 4's place and the 2's place. And what we're actually doing when we leave a 1 here in the 4's place is taking that original 8 and leaving half of it here. So here is 4, and now we have 4 more, which is the 1, 0 in the 2's place. We have two 2's, or 4. So you can see that this way too. If I break it down with a just a an 8 in binary with the weights above it here, and we take that 8 and break it down into 1, 4, and 2, 2's, you can see that we still have 8 represented, but we have 2, 2's here in this place. And that's what we're doing here. We're bringing over 2, 2's, we're subtracting 1, 2 from our 2, 2's, and that will leave us with 1. I want to show the same thing in decimal. Consider in decimal the following problem, 100 minus 1. We want to subtract 1 from 0 in the 1's place, but there's nothing to subtract it from. We have to borrow. There's nothing in the 10's place to borrow from, so we go to the 100's place. When we take away the 100, we distribute 9 10's to the 10's place and 10 1's to the 1's place. This is equivalent to when we took the 8 from the 8's place in binary, left 1, 4 in the 4's place, and 2, 2's in the 2's place. Now, of course, we know how this will end up. We're going to end up with 99. We'll take the 1 from the 10, and that will give us a 9. We'll bring down our 9, and this has been borrowed from, so there's nothing left. Now we're going to continue on with our binary example to see how this works out. So here we are where we left off and completed. We had our 1 here that we had subtracted from the 2 to get 1. We have another 1 that we're subtracting from our 1, 0 in the 2's place to get 1. We had 1 here that was left from when we borrowed from the 8's place. So in the 4's place, we have 1 minus 1 is 0. We had a 0 here because it was borrowed, so that got brought down. And our 1 here is just brought down. Our end result is the number 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now remember, of course, this is a... 19 in decimal because we have 1 in the 16th place, 0 in the 8, 0 in the 4, 1 in the 2, and 1 in the 1. 
Let's explore multiplication now in binary. So here we're going to start with the number 1101, which is the number 13 in decimal. I want to just start by saying something that is pretty obvious, but is very helpful to know, especially when you're doing multiplication in binary. In any base, if you multiply something by zero, the result is always zero. If you multiply it by one, the result is always the thing that you started with that you multiplied by one. So in binary, since we only have zeros and ones, that means that the results of our multiplication either have to be all zeros or the original value that we started with that we multiplied by one. So consider here our 13 times zero will give us a zero or 13 times one will give us 13. If we take 13 and we multiply it by two or one zero, we can see that the first result of multiplying the zero will give us all zeros, and the second result of multiplying the one after we do our mandatory indent for multiplication will give us the 13, 1101. Just like any other multiplication problem, we then add up our results and we end up with 11010 for that placeholder for the first one. And of course, this is the number 26 in decimal, just to verify our results. Let's look at a slightly harder one. This time we're gonna have 1011101 times 11010. The first result here is obviously zero since this is a zero. Now you can opt to write these out or just simply mark a placeholder and then continue on. I'm doing this to be explicit about what's happening here. The next, since I have a one, is this whole string. So 1011101, of course indented because we're in this place here. The next is all zeros because we have a zero here, followed by two of ones. So 1011101 twice. Now we have to add this all up. Just like any other multiplication, we're going to do so. The trick here is actually more in how you manage carries for the addition than it is in the multiplication. The multiplication is actually really straightforward and binary, but the carries can be difficult. Let's just look through it to see how this turned out. A zero is brought down, zero and one is one, zero, zero, and zero is zero, zero, one, and zero, and one are two, so that is a zero carry one, 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 and one is three, so one carry one, 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 one is three, so one carry one, 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 and one is three, so one carry one, 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 and one is four, so zero, zero and one, zero, zero and one is one, one and one is two, so zero carry one, one and one is two, so zero carry one, and this one is brought down. All right, lastly, let's do division. Now this is a little bit hard to look at at first, but it is again, no different from division in decimal. You take the number on the left and you see how you can divide it into the number on the right. So my one, one here or three, does not go into one. It does not go into one zero because that's two. So it has to go into one zero one because that's five. So I start with a one here. And I multiply this out and I subtract and I get a one zero. I then bring down the next number for one zero one and I read the process. One one goes into one zero one another one time. Again, I end up with one times one and one times one. I subtract for one zero. I bring down my next number and I see how many times I can divide one one into four. So three into four, which we know is one. So I put another one at the top here, repeat the process, bring down my last digit. And this time it looks like we're going to have no remainder because we can actually divide one one into one one exactly one time. So that leaves us with a remainder of zero. I'm not going to go into fractions just yet. We're gonna have a video coming up very shortly that will tell you how to deal with fractions in other bases. Please consider checking out these two resources. The first one is a review of conversion between different bases. The second one you might find very helpful, it's a list of practice problems. Now these practice problems are in binary, octal, and hexadecimal. So they will be used in this video and an upcoming video in which I'm going to go through arithmetic in octal and hexadecimal as well. I also included a cheat sheet for the weights here so you can have a quick reference for conversion. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this material, please do share it, subscribe, and like it, and I hope to see you again soon.